and I'll speak for myself, is I am not above criticism. I welcome it. I expected it in this episode, and I'll have to say that... Oh, dude, you're not above criticism? Fantastic, dude. Gary, watch my channel. Watch... Dude, I have so many criticisms above, of you. You are awful at this. Dude, watch my channel. Watch uh, Pop Counterculture. He, he, he has some great coverage of you, dude. Like, dude, you want criticism? Dude, improve your channel. Watch our content. We'll tell you all the shit you're getting wrong, all the shit that you're, I'm pretty sure you're lying, but I'll give you benefit of the doubt and say you're mistaken on. We'll, we'll update you on all that shit. We'll even give you tips on how you can, like, help your wife get her business back. Just basic shit. So you don't have to be a racist piece of shit on YouTube. We got ya. Anyways, so let's get to the main topics. So there's two big things. There's this South Park. Um, you know, maybe we'll just dive right into the South Park thing before we go into the Mary Jane stuff. So South Park. and Because I, I don't know if you guys have seen the South Park. Uh, we did a discussion, like Turf and I have seen it, and we did a discussion about it on the initiative. And we just thought it was kind of wild how all these guys are calling about this like it's a huge victory when it's like, did you watch the episode? Like, you're literally called racist in that episode. Did, did you miss it? At first, they were just dreams. But now I feel like I'm actually changing. Why would I be having visions that I'm a diverse woman? Because you're a fat racist piece of shit? Let's dive in. I keep having the same dream. Everywhere I look, people are being replaced. Okay. The last time I had the dream, I was, I was walking down the school hallway. And that's when I start to notice that something's wrong. Everyone I cared about has been systematically replaced. Why are they replacing every single character with someone who is diverse? It's like, it's not our fault, it's because of Kathleen Kennedy. But then Kathleen Kennedy says, Put another gay diverse woman in it, make it more fun. So, uh, is he going to be mixing context here? Because, um, it's worth noting, like, this wasn't Kathleen Kennedy. Like, the, the, the Kathleen Kennedy we're showing here was an Eric Cartman from an alternate reality who took over Kathleen Kennedy's spot. That's not Kathleen Kennedy in the episode. And I also want to point out, like, what this is saying is that we're taking Eric Cartman's side. Eric Cartman, who in the, the South Park universe is a murderer. He literally, like, he was dealing with a bully and he killed that bully's parents and fed the parents to that bully. That's who Eric Cartman is. That's the side that Nerdrotic is apparently for. Just, just saying. I don't think I'm going out on a limb here by saying that the pandering in Hollywood and the entertainment industry overall is way past the point of absurdity. It's almost difficult to make a parody of it. I guess the best example would be Director X's, who I like to call Projector X's, Robin Hood. I don't think that show was meant to be hilarious, but it is. You look goofy. <laughs> sure, Jan. There's too many to count, but the recent examples are Little Mermaid, Snow White, a black. Snow White hasn't even come out yet. Female Viking Queen, and the retconning of history with Cleopatra and. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit about Cleopatra except you guys. Nobody. I swear to God. <laughs> Amberlynn. But you know things have gotten pretty bad for Tinseltown overall and in particular Disney and with Kathleen Kennedy when South Park gets around to making an episode about you. Now they have roasted They they made an episode about George Lucas too. Did you know that? They they totally did. Hollywood many times in the past, but they were very specific in joining the Pandaverse. And one could argue that an episode like this is long overdue. Woke Hollywood has been some of the lowest hanging fruit and comedy gold that a lot of comedians were too scared to pick, but better late than never. Did they go in strong? Yes, but towards the end, they pulled some punches. And I'll say up front, I thought they were soft on Bob Iger, Kathleen Kennedy towards the end, and her critics. And while this episode definitely of course. Well, maybe he actually watched it because they were soft on Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah. So if you actually watch the episode, you you have 
on two sides of the table. You have Kathleen Kennedy on one side of the table, and the other side of the table is Eric Cartman, who literally represents all of the chuds. All of them. Like, it's established, uh, you know, Kathleen Kennedy's got, like, says she got, like, 10,000 hate messages calling her to C-word every day, and Eric was like, oh, it was more like 12,000, because he did them all. Um, so he literally is representing all the chuds. And the, the agreement they come to is that um, Kathleen Kennedy essentially should be more creative and, and less, uh, like, essentially they're saying that Kathleen Kennedy's biggest crime is that she's not very imaginative and, you know, just doesn't really do um, very uh, original ideas. And uh, and then on the other side of the table, the, the chuds, a.k.a. Eric Cartman, he's a racist piece of shit. So it's like, which which would you rather like be on the side of if you had to pick a side? I, it just it's it's kind of wild. Like, and I and they do kind of both sides them to a degree, which is weird. Like, I said it in the the initiative video, and you want you if you want my full details, you can go watch that video. It's up now. But uh, just real quick, like, I thought the episode was fine. It wasn't one of my. Uh, it's not classic South Park though. This is not Christian rock hard. This isn't Woodland Critters to Christmas. This isn't uh, Tally. This isn't uh, God. There's 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 so many classic. Uh, Make love not Warcraft. There are classic fucking South Park episodes. This one really doesn't really qualify. It's it's got moments. Definitely does roast Disney and Kathleen Kennedy. I think it's far more critical of Marvel and Hollywood overall. I would also argue that this is a bit of a cultural moment that needed to happen, and it wasn't all from this episode. Yes, South Park was very critical of Disney, but that criticism didn't end until the night the episode aired and Gina Carano dropped a nuclear bomb on- Oh, for fuck's sake, quit fapping off over Gina Carano. Okay, let's go over this. Well, is he gonna read it? He's gonna read it. I don't want to deal with it. I just read that Variety article. I don't want to. Kathleen Kennedy. We'll get to that. So join me, you over okay. eight hundred and seventy-two thousand. Okay, we'll get to that. Okay, Gina Carano. Uh, huge, she's probably got huge residuals from Terror on the Prairie, so she can, you know, go ahead and start using that money. <laughs> practitioners of common sense and the 40 percent who haven't subscribed yet let's talk about south park joining the panderverse as you know south park has roasted lucasfilm prior to disney and disney in the past somebody do something why are they doing this they're just taking indiana jones and they're they're raping him. do you also okay so he's gonna bring up how they go after george lucas do you remember the episode where they went after mel gibson do you want to talk about that one gary Well, well, Indiana Jones, what you doing in our neck of the woods? Okay, so this episode didn't thrill me, but like the Mickey Mouse uh, interpretation in this, where he's like this the, the money hungry little like cartoon character, I I loved. <laughs> Talk to me like that. And they've roasted Disney Marvel in the recent past. Can we just admit this whole woke thing isn't working? Woke thing? I, now it's like every movie and every TV show, you know, it's like you can see through it now. Audiences want to be entertained. They don't want to be preached at. And if you're just doing shows and movies that have an agenda, I, I, it's like it's just going to keep failing. The episode opens up with Cartman dreaming. If you know anything about South Park, Randy is not typically in the fucking right. <laughs> about a world where everyone he knows is replaced by diverse women who complain about the patriarchy. No, no, I had a dream that I was replaced by a diverse woman. Oh, not again. Yeah, only this time, it wasn't just me. They were taking all my favorite people and replacing them with diverse women complaining about the patriarchy. Sure, it's early. Dude, like, again, your, your, your side is with Eric Cartman. <laughs> Eric Cartman's a fucking monster in the series. Like, in general, I'm trying to think of a situation where, like, Eric Cartman's been on the right side. It's not really a thing. Early on in the episode, but I'm still waiting for the parody to start. Due to these recurring dreams, Cartman lives in fear of Disney. I'm waiting for the parody to start. Gary, that's because you are the parody, my man. You're the joke. Executives and one in particular, Kathleen Kennedy. I'm scared, Mom. Will you please just look and make sure Kathleen Kennedy isn't under my bed? Eric is also worried he's going through some kind of change. And now I feel like I'm actually changing. 
Why would I be having visions that I'm a diverse woman? Because you're a fat, racist piece of shit. God damn it, I'm not fat. I'm just shamed for my body in a world where white men decide what's beautiful. <gasps> what the f*** was that? Unfortunately for Cartman, it all becomes a reality when he is replaced by a black female and transported to Universe 216. So are you got? Wait, are you guys gonna do a fucking episode breakdown? Okay. I should know you'll just do an episode breakdown. Um, but do you, do you remember what the, the lesson of this episode was? Because at first, like, so the, the black woman, Eric Cartman, comes into the, the regular universe with the, the Stan, Stan, Kyle, and Kenny that we all know. And their first reaction is, oh my god, that can't be Eric Cartman, that's a black woman. And do you remember what the final conclusion of that storyline was? The final conclusion of that storyline, Gary, was them going, oh, I guess Eric Cartman can be a black woman. Because, like, yeah, it was a black woman, but she acted and did stuff exactly like fucking Eric Cartman. And they just went, oh, yeah, Eric Cla Cartman's a black woman now. Okay. Speed. I swear, the multiverse is just an excuse for lazy writing. Whoa. Yeah, it's like every damn movie now. Where he's stuck in a world where everyone has been replaced by diverse women who complain about the patriarchy. Dude, Kenny, enough about Tammy's knockers. You sound like a white male trying to reestablish the patriarchy. Ah! Ah! This episode features a diverse female Cartman. This is bullshit. How do you get your mom arrested for child abuse? A diverse female Stan. Well, maybe you should try not being so racist. Yes, all the characters, Gary. You've already shown all the characters. Oh, my God. If he, if he, if, is he, like, is he gonna say a diverse female Kyle and a diverse female Kenny? Like, is he just gonna do all of them? Because, yes, we know, we see. This is Cartman. A diverse female Kyle. Yeah, bitch, you just wanna get set home so you can play Baldur's Gate 3. Dude, you're, all, you, you, you got 19 minute video here. You don't need to pat it out like this shit. A diverse female Kenny. Tammy Mullins has sweet fucking knockers. A diverse female Mr. Garrison. Today we're going to talk more about female exclusion in the male patriarchy. Diverse female versions of Jimbo and Ned. Hey, who's that, Ned? Just all of them? Just, Jesus, Gary, you don't have to pad time like this. It's ridiculous. Not sure. Ned! A diverse female Butters and... Butters! Why didn't you answer this door? Oh, hey, Dad. The episode also features Bob Iger, Kathleen Kennedy, another Kathleen Kennedy, and a MacGuffin. The so, so, Gary, the Kathleen Kennedy you just showed, the Kathleen Kennedy that you just kind of went over real fast. This one. Ah, yeah, I, I nailed you, YouTube uh, timeline bar. Um, it's established in this episode. This isn't actually Kathleen Kennedy. This is Eric Cartman posing as Kathleen Kennedy. Just saying. Kathleen Kennedy and a MacGuffin, the Panderstone. Obviously, South Park is one of the few shows, if not the only show remaining, that equally takes shots at all sides, including the critics of Kathleen Kennedy. And just in case you're new to the channel, I would include myself in that party. Uh, could you check under my bed and make sure Kathleen Kennedy isn't there? Butters, what have I told you about being more mature? I can assure you Kathleen Kennedy is not under your bed. Ah, she gonna get me! She gonna get me! Uh, Call me crazy, but I think this one is directed at a specific group of people. To start getting piles and piles of hate mail, endless messages calling you the C word, you can't think straight. Well, I'm sorry I wrote all those letters. It probably was a bit much. No, I got like 10,000 letters a day. I was doing more like 12 to 13,000, especially after the new Indiana Jones came out. They even include some of our talking points. Eric Cartman is in here all the time getting in trouble. That's because I'm from a different universe. How many times do I have to tell you people the Disney company tried to use their platform to bring about social change and I got fed? And part of the genius of South Park in this particular episode, especially in the beginning, is they could be roasting both sides at the same time. I guess the stark difference between Kathleen Kennedy, Disney, Hollywood, and the critics, and I'll speak for myself, is I am not above criticism. I welcome it. I expected it in this episode, and I'll have to say that... Oh, dude, you're not above criticism? Fantastic, dude. Gary, watch my channel. Watch, dude, I have so many criticisms above of you. You are awful at this. Dude, watch my channel. Watch uh, Pop Counterculture. He, he, he has some great coverage of you, dude. Like, dude, you want criticism? Dude, improve your channel. Watch our content. We'll tell you all the shit you're getting wrong. All the shit that you're... I'm pretty sure you're lying, but I'll give you benefit of the doubt and say you're mistaken on. We'll, we'll update you on all that shit. We'll even give you tips on how you can, like, help your wife get her business back. Just basic shit. So you don't have to be a racist piece of shit on YouTube. We got ya. 
that I was left wanting more. Now, they did skewer Disney. I'm just saying, isn't it possible that we here at Disney pandered so much that we've opened a doorway to the Panderverse? The Panderverse is just a theory, and yet we do have the Panderstone downstairs. And there was some criticism of old Bobby Iger. Something is wrong with the universe. Our stocks are down, and every Disney movie this year has failed. We don't understand it, sir. Yeah, I, I do think, uh, I think it's worth saying, like, one of my biggest issues with this ish episode is that it's a very surface level critique of what's actually going on. It's kind of wild. <laughs> we keep making the same movie over and over and pandering to everyone, but suddenly it's not working. Then we've got to pander harder. Miss Kennedy, you're back. Great to see you, ma'am. Thanks, you guys. We have a lot of changes to discuss at the company. From now on, we're only going to make original content that doesn't pander. Sure we will, Kate. Sure we will. <laughs> but old Bobby Iger got away with a light touch. Now, I would have written him like he is, a former weatherman who just likes to buy everything, but that's just me. I love lamp. I love lamp. Now, most of the focus is on Kathleen Kennedy, but to be fair, a lot of the stuff that was thrown at her is conflated with everything that's wrong with, for example, Disney Marvel. I don't care what you saw, Butters. There's gotta be a better explanation than just this stupid multiverse. Some multiverse stuff is cool. Yeah, it can be cool for like one movie. Now it's just this cheap device that people use to breathe life into tire franchises. Space-time portal is manifesting. Pandaverse quantum fields are aligned. Yeah, that sounds like typical multiverse gobbledygook. What do we know about the Pandaverse? I'm afraid we know frighteningly little. Can you imagine it? An infinite number of universes with infinite combinations of pants and shirts. What do you think about multiple universes now, boys? Yeah, they're pretty fucking stupid. There is another very good example that you can lay at the feet of Kathleen Kennedy and the other executives in corporate Hollywood. Their use of their shilling and a- Exactly, Ed. We could, we could help you out, Gary. We, we got your back. Come talk to us. Watch our content. And make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon for new notifications partners in the corporate access media, especially when it comes to their approach to fandom. We're just minding our own business and she keeps saying she's Eric Cartman. Okay, and what's wrong with that? What's wrong is it doesn't make any sense. Okay, I see. There's a diverse female where Cartman used to be and you don't like that. It's not that we don't like it, it's... Don't you think that's weird? Well, I don't see a problem with it at all. And if you boys don't think Eric can be a black woman, then maybe the problem is you. What? But it doesn't end... Oh, are you gonna play the Miles Morales clip, Gary? Play the Miles Morales clip. Do it. There, they really do take shots at everybody, including corporate America. <laughs> oh, he cut out the Miles Morales clip in the... Okay. Gary, Gary, like I said, Gary, you need to watch our content. Here you go. Here is the Miles Morales clip. I actually have it clipped in a less than 10 second segment. Let me pull it up for you. So, Gary, you can watch this. And like, yeah, in, in case you missed it when you're watching this episode, like there's this bit about Miles Morales in that episode that you should totally uh, check out. Probably have a problem with Black Spider-Man, too. No, Miles Morales is sweet. That's a whole constructed thing with its own character and narrative. And there you go. There you go, Gary. They like Miles Morales. Did you know that? They, they praise him in that one. Yeah. Mm. Ah! Oh, my God. Please. No. Ah! No. Ah! And America. Hi, Raul. Welcome to Shitty Walk. Can I take an order, Pre? Ah, we're just having tea. Thank you. Okay, you just want to tea and talk about shitty male-dominated society. That's fine. And no, I'm not sure what the difference is. Then we get to South Park's guest of honor, Kathleen Kennedy, who does get the brunt of the criticism through most of the episode, but not all, through two... Does she? Does she really? You see, what I watched, it was mostly seemed like Judge were getting a lot of the brunt. Like, they... Like, a lot of their Kathleen Kennedy stuff was kind of surface level. Like, it's there. They definitely criticize her, but... Like, dude, like, Gary, like, you realize in this episode you're called a racist piece of shit, right? Like... Two characters, and that's the beauty of this show. They use Cartman as plausible deniability. They used him to represent a portion of the fandom, like it or not. And there's Cartman Kennedy, who represents the very worst aspects of Lucasfilm. And this stuff is absolute gold. Is there a problem, people? We were just discussing uh, ideas of what to do with the new Prince Eric movie. Put a kick in it, make her gay! Some of the execs are just expressing that maybe... Well, well, that maybe we should go a different route than we did with Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones, put a chicken in it and make a lady gag! And this is my personal favorite. Kathleen Kennedy is down on set right now ruining the new Bambi movie. Hey, but Mrs. Kennedy, ba Bambi's a baby deer. But baby deer, put a chicken in it make her gag! But this is a very close second. Yeah, yeah, no, he definitely is going for plausible deniability here. <laughs> there you are, Miss Kennedy, the linguine and clam sauce. Uh, excuse me. 
I believe I asked you to put a chicken in this and make her gay. Uh, yes, the chef was a little confused what you meant by that. It means put a chicken in linguine and make her fucking gay! And I want it leg! Then there's the real Kathleen Kennedy who was thrown through a portal into Universe 216B by Cartman Kennedy due to her overuse of the Panderstone. I saw the Panderstone for the first time a few years ago. An ancient piece of artificial intelligence that could be used to make the same movies over and over again while appealing to absolutely everyone. While appealing to no one, a line that should have been in, but wasn't. It's one of the few missed opportunities in this. But I think Matt and Trey make up for that a little bit by pointing out one of our main criticisms of Hollywood overall and Disney Star Wars in particular. I decided I would show them. I would start making movies to fight all the bigotry in our society. But in Gary, do you like you played the clip already? And I like how you're separating out because they explain why. Like, like, the, the, uh, dude, they're not doing it to fight all the bigotry. Like, if you honestly want to know the truth, they're doing it for money. Because woke shit makes money. It does. You you might get mad at it, but it does. Now, the reason the, the, the episode was to fight bigotry, but the reason she felt like she had to fight, fight bigotry is because she was getting 12,000 racist letters a day. Or sexist, probably, in her case. From uh, a Cartman, who represents all the fucking chuds. Gary, like, the reason why she was putting woke shit in the movies, according to this episode, was a backlash to people being pieces of shit to her. Just saying. Instead of doing any real work, I turned to the Panderstone. Newsflash, a Star Wars movie or a crappy D-plus Star Wars show is not a platform for social change. It's supposed to be entertainment, and it's especially... A platform for social change. Gary, you are criticizing a variation of Kathleen Kennedy presented in South Park. That's not actually fucking Kathleen Kennedy, you dipshit. Actually <laughs> rich coming from a billion dollar corporation run by multi-million dollar executives who are ordering around millionaire adult pretenders who drive past tent six. Dude, you always call them adult pretenders, but you obviously are, at least at one point in your life, assuming you're not full grifting. At one point in your life, you're a big fan of this stuff. And honestly, if you're not a fan, like, if you're not at least interested in this stuff, I don't know why you still talk about it. Jesus. <laughs> Cities in their shithole of a city every day and dodge fentanyl zombies to get to work and don't give them a second thought. You want to enact some social change? Take the hundreds of millions of dollars you're going to waste on a movie and a TV show that'll be forgotten in a week and feed some starving kids. Anyway, I'll also add that it probably... Well, I mean, uh, there is an argument that these budgets are fucking stupid anymore. Because they are. Probably wasn't a really good strategy to alienate and piss off half. Oh, fuck this picture. Okay, so let's go into... Yeah, I don't think I've discussed it. I know Turf Nation's discussed it. I, we might have gone on to the initiative. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys the origin of this fucking picture they keep on pushing. So, Kathleen Kennedy went to an air force event and it was an air force event trying to get women to enlist in the air force and they had t-shirts the force is female the air force is female and kathleen kennedy was there the person who runs star wars and they were like hey wouldn't it be funny since you had star wars and star wars is the force wouldn't it be funny if you wore one of our shirts and took a photo and she was like yeah that sounds funny let's do that and fucking chud videos for fucking decades i swear to fucking god it's insane on this fucking picture that was a fucking goofy joke god damn if your fandom then it's you you're the one who caused all this you you're the one who caused all this i wouldn't have tried to fight racism with a panther stone if you hadn't written all those letters i wouldn't have written all those letters if you haven't tried to fight racism with a panther stone and this is where into the pandaverse brings it home kathleen kennedy ends up being just a sweet old lady who wanted to make great entertainment but she got upset from all the fan criticism and decided to double down oh he actually does go into it nice gary um so like Okay, let's see where he goes with this. <laughs> I know you care about all things Disney. I'm sorry I was so reckless with the things that you love. It was just lazy. Oh, if it were. Now, the, the word air isn't blanked out. The, the shirts just said the force is female, but it, it, the, the force stood for Air Force, not Star Wars Force. 
Only that simple. You know what? If Kathleen Kennedy came out and said something like that three or four years ago, Disney Star Wars might still be alive. And that's followed up with Cartman apologizing. Disney Star Wars is still very much alive. Just saying. <laughs> ...to Kathleen Kennedy and saying that railing on woke stuff... That's a good question, Sam, man. Gary, you're, you're saying that they should donate to charity? I don't disagree. But maybe, like, if you're going to make racist piece of shit videos that literally make society worse and push shitty agendas, like, number one, I, I love the irony of you yelling at, at studios for making woke shit and pushing out their agenda when... All your, the points of your videos is to push out your fucking agenda. I love the irony there. But also, you could use all that money you're making to, uh, I don't know, maybe feed some kids yourself. Uh, how, how's your, how's your channel doing? I know, uh, let's see. All right, so, according to this, Gary, you're bringing in, uh, 1.4 to $22,000 a month. You could probably feed quite a few hungry kids for that money. Quite a few. Like, my personal experience, and I, you probably have side deals. I actually refuse side deals. So, uh, you probably make probably pretty close to 22k. So, you could be feeding quite a few people. Yeah, and he, you could help your, your wife get her fucking salon business back for that. Shit. Come on, Gary. Help out your wife, dude, you monster. Yum. Stuff all the time is lazy too. I was expecting a shot like that from South Park and we were not disappointed. Listen, they're not gonna get into the nuances of the arguments on this channel or any. Well, that, yeah, that, it was a surface level analysis, Gary. I, I agree, I agree, Gary. It was very surface level. The other. But Gary, you like criticism. I get into the nuances of your argument. Watch my content. Watch counterculture, Gary. We definitely analyze your content, and it's bullshit. When it comes to the Star Wars fandom and all the complaints of woke Hollywood, which are very legitimate, that's why they made this episode. So everyone returns to their respective universes. <laughs> oh, yo, bitch, you killed Kenny. You fat ho. And all is right with the world, South Parks and ours, because we needed this. I would call it a classic, despite its flaws. Sure, there were some missed opportunities. Again, they could have gone a lot harder. On well, I mean, I, like a fun exercise I like to do is whenever they say woke, try to think of what word they could use instead of woke. Like, uh, my favorite was just a comment where they complain about the woke Reva actress for Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I just had to ask him, like, what do you mean by woke? And that's, that, that can be a fun exercise. Whenever they call an actress or a person woke, just like, what makes them woke? You know, what's a separate word I could use to separate, to, to, to use in that place instead of woke? And it's usually a word they're not going to want to use. On Iger concerning the stock, the overall health of the company, and their little skirmish in Florida. Maybe they're saving Kevin Feige for a sequel because most of the Pandaverse is happening in Disney Marvel right now, and they're the ones still making movies and Disney Star Wars isn't. And while Matt and Trey did mention that some of the fans were racist, they completely failed to mention that Disney did things like shrink jump. Boy, oh boy. Um, okay, so they shrunk Finn on the Chinese poster. They put a mask on Black Panther in uh, Black Panther in the Chinese poster. They thanked the concentration to camp in the live action Mulan movie. Uh, is there anything else I'm missing? They, they have like a couple of examples. I think those are the three big ones that they just fucking use on repeat all the fucking time. Like, listen, Gary can make a thousand fucking racist videos, but like uh, doing three uh, things are equal. Right, Gary? Because, yeah. And uh, the Black Panther thing was bad, in my opinion. The the Mulan thing was really bad. Mulan was also a terrible movie. The Finn thing, I'm actually not as confident about. Because, like, the American poster versus the Chinese poster. Now, if you remember, when Force Awakens was advertised in the United States, they actually, like... They make the, the, the bait and switch argument. You could actually kind of make the bait and switch argument for the Force Awakens promotion. Because they kind of promoted Finn as the main character. So it makes sense that he'd be bigger in the, the, the American poster. Now, did they promote him as the main character in the Chinese uh, version? I don't know. I do not know. 
But uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, he may not have been promoted as much, and you know it might have been kind of obvious in China that Ray would be the main character. In which case, they didn't. Uh, yeah, they didn't uh, have his picture as big. You know, this is. I don't know. I mean, I will say I don't like this, and I do think Finn was mistreated in those movies, especially the third one. Um, but yeah, like. Okay, let's see. Uh. I, I kind of already did my rant. So let's see. Uh, next up, we're going to have Black Panther. Black Panther, right? Yeah. John Boyega's Finn on the Force Awakens poster for China covered up Chadwick Boseman's... Fuck yeah, Black Panther. Nailed it. Okay, so next up's going to be Mulan. ...his face on the Black Panther poster for China and thank the camp that you concentrate in in China. Fucking Not to mention all the... Nailing it. Oh, God, Gary, you are so fucking predictable. It's fucking lazy at this point. Dude, get new shit. Alphabet stuff that gets. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Oh, uh, are you talking about stuff getting added down China? Okay, Gary, again, uh, Ed, pop counterculture already perfectly explains this. So why do they cut out the woke stuff in China, Gary? Seriously, Gary, I hope you watch this because why do they cut out the woke stuff in China? They do it because it doesn't sell to a Chinese audience. And they want money. So wait, if they cut it out in the Chinese market because it doesn't sell to a Chinese uh, audience, then why do they leave it in the American market? Because it sells to an American market, dude. This whole argument debunks your whole fucking channel. Congratulations. And it's Ed's channel. I want Pop Counterculture, go subscribe to him. That's actually his argument. I'm just reiterating it edited out of their films for other countries. But I can't imagine Kathleen Kennedy is too happy with this, especially when she sees headlines like this from Deadline. South Park skewers Lucasfilm boss Kathleen Kennedy in Pandaverse special. <laughs> but the criticism does isn't in there. While South Park slung some arrows at Kathleen Kennedy, Gina Carano dropped a bomb on her. Oh. <laughs> yes. Because Gina Carano is infinitely more uh, influential in our pop culture zeitgeist than fucking South Park, Gary. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking serious right now? Gina Carano is clawing for relevance, and you guys are just going to go with it because you are begging. You are begging for uh, just, like, any sort of, like edge in Hollywood and she was in the Hollywood system so like oh yeah let's let's suck up this one you know what Gary you know what Gary let's look up some of your past comments on Gina Carano this might take me a moment I haven't I didn't get this prepared but let's uh before we go into his Gina Carano rant let's look up uh what other things he's had to say about Gina Carano okay so they're on planet Sargon of Akkad and they're fighting dog people and it just so happens that that's where the Mandalorian is going to with little baby Yoda. And uh, they get to town. And we, uh, uh, we meet Gina Carano's uh, Cara Dune. Cara Dune, who is just a badass woman. Uh, and that's pretty much all she ever plays. Uh, I believe, I haven't seen her in a lot of things. I saw her in Deadpool. So this is the thing I've seen her in with the most lines. She's a competent actress. But for all those people who thought she would, should have played Wonder Woman, no, no, uh, no, nah, ah, uh, no. She's cool, but no. We get Gary in the best faces. I can't really say anything. You can get some good faces. So getting upset too. doesn't help, and it and I need to stay as laser focused as I can because I have ADHD from hell, and it's you know I see a pretty light, and I go woo, you know. So yeah, I just need to stay on him, stay on Disney. 200 watt I'm, studio for five dollars didn't think uh, G, uh didn't think gina was i miss old gary old gary was actually seemed kind of nice <laughs> stay on disney 200 watt studio for five dollars didn't think uh, G, uh didn't think gina was woke liked it uh reminded me of xena she was thick oh i got nothing wrong with the thick Pfft, nothing wrong with that and her character was a shock trooper best ep uh but the episode was mediocre yeah, I, I don't think she was bad uh, at all. I just, uh, for all those people who thought she should be Wonder Woman, uh, no, no. She can be a lot of other things, but not Wonder Woman. Yeah, he obviously thinks she's a great actress, guys. Um, she, like, obviously you can tell by the way he's talking about her that he thinks this is a voice of Hollywood. Uh, this is the representative of Hollywood. 
Faulkner. Gina Carano dropped this on Twitter the night the episode came out. This is the part where Kathleen Kennedy demands any YouTubers get censored off YouTube for sharing and laughing at this hilarious episode. This is the part where Kathleen Kennedy... Because Kathleen Kennedy, because of this episode, Kathleen Kennedy is just now becoming aware of this, Gina Carano? Is that your argument? Because, no, I'm sure she's aware of this. I'm sure she does get thousands of letters. <laughs> so she'll have YouTube disable the thumbs down option. Uh, thumbs down has been disabled for a while. Fun, fun fact because of the ratio she'll receive. Then she'll have her publicist ghouls make sure Variety and Hollywood Reporter run hit pieces about the South Park creators and their families, smearing their name. Why? It actually wasn't, like, essentially the biggest criticism it landed at Kathleen Kennedy was that she's uncreative. That's it. It called all the people making fun of her racist and sexist. Just, just saying. <laughs> Aim through every useful idiot she has under her thumb who would sell their soul to work for Lucasfilm. She'll activate her online mob to repeat. Kathleen Kennedy has an online mob? Kathleen Kennedy, send your online mob to my channel. Come on. Um, I could use some, some, some help. Come on. That the <laughs> South Park creators are racist, bigot, transphobes, and demand that South Park creators publicly apologize by... Why? Like, is this something Kathleen Kennedy has been known for, Gina? Like, are we aware of this? I don't, I don't think this is a thing that's ever happened. Like, what are you basing this on? Using words she approves of, and finally, she'll demand they subject themselves to a re-education course of 45 people in the LGBTQ community Zoom call to sit there and listen of how badly they got their feelings hurt all over a little boop of a South Park episode. Okay, that last bit is so strangely specific. I guarantee you that's something uh, Gina Carano had to do uh, because she was being a bitch. Like, uh, like frankly, like, uh, what, they were asking her to put, like, her pronouns in her profile, and she said no. And frankly, if she just said no, that would be fine. But then she started doing the beep, bop, boop stuff and just kind of being a bitch about it. And it was just like, okay, Gina, that's, you don't need to be, like, rude about it. And then, then she also started sharing Nazi shit, so... That wasn't great. Episode, but maybe, just maybe, the jig is up. Whoa. Damn, you go, girl. That sounded cathartic. Now, some of that was public knowledge, and some of it wasn't. But Gina wasn't done. Now, Gina is responding here to some Star Wars shill who has me blocked, and I'm not going to bother to see what he says because I don't really care. And we're not going to read this whole thing. I just want to read some highlights. For some added context, not just for you, but for the people reading, one of the things your overlords, being Disney, asked me to do was to unfollow certain accounts because they said bad things about Kathleen Kennedy. That was a huge red flag for me. Um, okay, so if it, like, that's almost part of an actor's job, though. Like, they have, like, if Disney is going to pay money to put into your contract that, like, they have a degree of control over your Twitter account, then they have that. And if you don't want that, make sure to negotiate that they can't do that. I mean, you're working for a huge company like Disney, and you, Gina Crano, not Gary, Gina Crano, Cara Dune was being set up for her own fucking spinoff series. She was. And you fucked it up. So, it's on you. <laughs> Gina mentions that with anything in entertainment, quote unquote, haters or critics or legitimate criticism is part of the game. And maybe you should just have a. Th is that what you do, Gary? You do legitimate criticism. It just seems to me like you're a bigot. Doesn't seem like legitimate criticism to me. Thicker skin. If you are a proper good leader, you learn how to embrace and communicate not dictate and silence and demand your actors and directors unfollow and shame more than half of your fan base. It is not more than half the fan base. It's a very vocal part of the fan base, that's for sure, but it's not more than half, not remotely. And the people who have stuck with your franchise for decades. Ouch. Your Disney overlords tried to hide behind the two opposing fan bases fighting each other instead of taking responsibility. So they encouraged the hate, all while virtue signaling they are standing up for minorities, but instead using them as a shield and a weapon. Funny enough, just how? How? 
by by having them and saying don't be racist. Gary, did you know if you just did ballot like non bigoted criticisms, I really won't have any reason to cover your channel. It'd get kind of boring pretty quickly. It would just be like, oh, I disagree with you. And I've covered people I disagree with. I just don't do it that often because. Just disagreeing is not very interesting. We're allowed to have different opinions. Fact is, Gary, you're usually a fucking bigot. It makes it quite a bit more interesting. And it, when you're when you're gonna be bigoted in your critiques, I get to call you out for being a bigot. How our government works, based. You tell them I'm coming, and hell's coming with me. You hear? Hell's coming with me. Yes, they are all very scared of Gina Carano. Uh. We already looked it up recently. Gina Carano, Terror on the Prairie, opened in theaters to a massive $800 opening weekend. $800. And wound up with a grand box office total of $13,000. Gina Carano is rolling in the fucking dough. Rolling in it after all those royalties. Man, so much terror on the prairie money. It's intense. <laughs> Gina Carano going scorched earth on Kathleen Kennedy, and I am here for it. Now, I encourage you to go to her Twitter and read the whole thing, and I guarantee you there's a lot more to this story that she would love to tell, and hopefully someday we hear it. But thanks to Gina, we got the exclamation point that we didn't get in South Park's Joining the Pandaverse. But enough from me, let's go to the people. Now, we can't go to the critics on Rotten Tomatoes because none of them reviewed Joining the Pandaverse. Five None of them reviewed it? Like, they probably just haven't gone to it yet. Uh, here, well, let's see. This was three days ago. Let's see. Does Ron... Here, let me switch it off, because Ron Tomatoes can be wonky. Let's see. No, no, it still doesn't... It's, it still does not have a critics rating, which is kind of surprising. Nah. I don't know how much I care. <laughs> My argument has always been, uh, like, you... Find a critic you like, and, you know, you can look for, for their advice and stuff like that. But, like, you can't really critique something until you watch it yourself. You can't. Um, so if you actually want to critique it and give, a, you know, advice, watch it yourself. Five stars from Mr. Manzarelli, right up there with the best South Park episodes. I was hoping Disney doubles down so we get an even wilder part two. Yeah, we'll see if they get around to Disney Marvel. Kevin Christ C for five stars. They said what they needed to say. Enough is enough. Hollywood. Cool, Gary. Cool. Um, just reading other people's reviews. You know, I can do that too. Let's see. We have it pulled up here. Let's see what reviews. Okay, so we have one uh, top critic. Who, one top critic for uh, reviewed it, and they gave it a positive score. Forbes gave it a positive score. Good deal. Okay. So Gary is going to the positive ones. Let's uh, let's let's take the other route, shall we? Because you know we can have fun with this. How how can we organize this? I hate fucking Rotten Tomatoes anymore. I fucking hate it. Here we go. Samey R. He's he's right up my alley. Honestly, it wasn't that great. Entertaining at times, but I expected much more from a topic that could potentially be very funny. Boom. Thank you. That sums up my thoughts on the episode exactly. I had to step away from South Park a few years ago after the focus shifted to Randy because the show is not as funny as it used to be. But I wanted to check out Pandaverse because of all that's happening in modern entertainment. It was okay. I appreciate the theme and critique of modern entertainment. But again, South Park just isn't as funny as it used to be. Also, the ending was lame. My overall reacting, reaction was meh. I was looking forward to this. I love South Park, but this episode is is rough. Ah, this episode is rough to watch. Everything they are mocking is true about Disney and Hollywood, but it's a bad episode. And you might be like, gee whiz, aren't you cherry picking uh, reviews? And my response would be, yeah, what do you think Gary's doing? <laughs> needs to stop shoving DEI down our throats and just focus on good storytelling. Wow, what a bigot. Eric P for four and a half stars. It's doing a fair job of showing things that have gone wrong in the entertainment industry and trying to describe how the situation came about. While it will doubtless offend some specific individuals, Kathleen Kennedy, I could not describe it as toxic. Unlike certain other movies, i.e. 
the most recent movies from Hollywood and Disney, it's actually working to shed light on the subject in a positive way. Considering that the Hollywood pandering has been going on for years and the limited time of the episode, Eric, I would say that's a fair assessment. G. Leja F for four and a half stars. Amazing, hilarious satire. This episode shows everyone and especially all of those Hollywood big name studios exactly the point of why their projects keep flopping over the last years. I hope this is a wake up call. Nonetheless, it's one of the best episodes of the show I've seen in a while. You know, I wouldn't be holding out for that wake up call, especially from Disney. And we'll end it here, Michael S. for five stars. I haven't laughed so hard in a long time. Satire has always been, and I'm sure he meant to say, the best form of social commentary. People need to stop being offended at everything and learn to laugh because we sure screwed ourselves. And Michael is right, and that is exact. Yes, because Gary, your channel's fucking hilarious. Like, dude, if you're a parody, man, please tell me now. If, you're, if your channel's a fucking parody, let me know. I will probably stop covering it because it'll be like, dude, you are like the perfect critique of of uh, racist fucking bigot nerds. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly why South Park is such a good thing, and that's what I try to do here, taking the piss out of a very self-serious Hollywood. And I do believe satire and mockery of all institutions helps achieve balance, something we need to return to because we are dangerously close to parody world. And some unsolicited words of advice for big wig Hollywood ex executives say for example you're in charge of one of the most valuable intellectual properties of all time and you can't handle a little criticism maybe the job isn't for you if wait kathleen candy can't handle a little criticism number one she doesn't get a little criticism she gets a fuck ton of criticism an absolute metric fuck ton and like she can't handle it really like all we have is Gina Carano whining about it. I have not heard a fucking peep from Kathleen Kennedy about this. Not a fucking word. How, like, what are you expecting? Because if she said anything, you'd be like, oh, look, she's she's freaking out. She's having a breakdown. But she hasn't said a fucking word. And you're like, oh, she can't handle criticism. What's your evidence that she can't handle criticism? Because from what I've seen, she's handling it like a fucking champ. She should win an award for how she's handling her criticism. Because so much of her criticism is massive fucking bullshit. I, Gary. Yes, Kathleen Kennedy can handle criticism. I assure you. If you can't handle being called out for what is the very definition of the bigotry of lowered expectations, obvious pandering, then maybe the problem is you. Ultimately, this show did what it was supposed to do. It made me laugh a lot. Mission accomplished. And we're openly having a conversation about all the pandering in Hollywood. This is something we couldn't do a couple of years ago. So yes, I think that's a good thing. And no, I don't think we have to worry about Kathleen Kennedy being under our bed. Protect these characters. Make sure that they still continue to, to live in the way that you created them. Development is a complicated, long-term process. I hate you! You're a son! I hate you! I hate you! True. Kathleen Candy can't handle criticism, guys. Erotic.com. <laughs> if you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will... Ah, uh, Gary. That was bad. That was very, very bad. I love that. Like, Kathleen Candy can't handle criticism. I, that, that has just kind of broken my brain a little bit. The idea that Kathleen Candy is like, n like, oh, she's freaking out over this criticism. Really? Because I haven't seen shit from her about criticism. I don't know if she's ever referenced criticism she's gotten once. It's intense how much criticism she gets.
books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth.